Hey, everybody, and welcome to Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. I'm Eric from the bar for today. Two single malts, one distillery. Ben Romick, 10 years old, and Ben Romick, 10 years old, Imperial Fruit. As always here on the channel, no taste finish review of these whiskeys coming right up. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about their value, give you my final thoughts, final scores, leave you with a malt musing. Uh, but first, if you are brand new to the channel, take a second, hit that subscribe button. That'll make sure you don't miss any of my reviews, which come out every single Friday, as well as get info on my happy hours, which is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, Ben Romick Distillery, located in the Speyside region. A uh, couple things that are really interesting about Ben Romick. So first and foremost, um, this is a, their older label design. In 2020, they changed, now looks like this. Um, additionally, uh, the Ben Romick Distillery is unique in that it is owned by an independent Scott whiskey bottler, Gordon and McBeth. So they are the ones who are in charge of this distillery and reopened it back in 1998. Um, they do things in a pretty traditional way over at Ben Romick. They use um, Dunnage warehouses. So not many, not many whiskey makers use the Dunnage warehouse approach anymore. But basically, this is the old school way of aging your whiskey. Uh, they usually only go to about three barrels high in their racks, stone walls, earthen floors. Um, you know, about 70% of the influence of a whiskey comes from the aging process in the barrels. And so the Dunnage warehouse does impart some uh, of its kind of characteristics into the whiskey. Ben Romick is also for a space side whiskey unique in that they use a little bit of peat in their whiskey. So uh, some of it has a little peatiness, some of them have a little smoke, um, and they do have uh, a couple heavy peats. So that's the story on Ben Romick. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into this 10 year old whiskey here. So this is one of their introductory in their core range. Um, from what, uh, it does not tell you a whole lot of information about the uh, whiskey itself. Casts are hand filled, hand weighed, hand stamped, et cetera, et cetera, done at the warehouse. Um, and not much other information here. It is bottled at 43%. This is what the old bottle looks like. And looking at the back, yeah, not uh, a lot of other information. I was able to find online um, that this whiskey is matured in 80% of it is matured in bourbon casks, 20% first go Oloroso sherry. So um, you're looking at a bourbon and a sherry mix on this whiskey. It does not say anything about coloring or chill filtration. So um, without that, uh, we will have to go ahead and assume that this has been chill filtered and uh, color it has been added to it. All right, that's the tail of the tape on the Ben Romick 10. This is the color we're looking at. Let's dive in. So immediately on the nose, you do get a little bit of smoke. It's faint. It's more of like a barbecue than it is a hospital or a, a chimney soot like you get off some of the islas. There's notes of honey, vanilla, bit of uh, red fruit, dry red fruit. Maybe a little bit of like yellow apple. Slight bitterness. You do get an oaky, oaky characteristic in some of this. So sweet, bitter. Okay, let's give it a taste. Slant you. It arrives sweet, pretty rich, viscous whiskey for 43% full mouthfeel. Oranges. A little bit of nuttiness, vanilla, caramel, and then you get a you know a moderate hit of a little bit of peat, a little bit of smokiness, mixing well with like a nice dark chocolate feeling as it goes into the finish. Really heavy flavor on this. Um, about a medium finish. Again, you're getting a little bit of honey, slight dried red fruit notes, um, caramel, a bit of bitter dark chocolate. Just a little bit of this kind of sour, bitter note. It's it's almost maybe a little bit like close to grapefruit or citrus. Um, okay. So that is the Ben Romick 10. Now, Ben Romick 10 Imperial Proof. So first and foremost, um, this one bottled at 57% ABV. 
uh, as opposed to the 10 per, uh, 43 percent on the 10 year old uh, regular release. Now, the imperial proof is British imperial proof. Um, so it is not uh, uh, proof in the way that you would expect from like bourbons. So um, imperial proof in the UK basically goes back to, uh, you know, way back in the day where they were trying to determine the, let me just make sure I get it right, gunpowder, they used gunpowder with rum uh, to, to like attempt to ignite it and prove whether the rum was watered down or not. That's kind of where it comes from. The thing that you should know about it is that um, 100 imperial proof in the UK is 57% alcohol versus 100 proof in the US is 50%. So uh, that's a little bit of the backstory. Again here, um, this does not tell you what it has been aged in. I do believe it is a mix of ex bourbon ex sherry. Um, again, yeah, high ABV. One other thing to note here, it does not mention anything about the color. This is the bottle. As you can see, a bit darker. Compare the two. This one looks like it has a bit more of a sherry, sherry quality to it. But again, um, it does not say much different on it. Kind of the same amount of minimal information, which we'd like to see more of. However, the Imperial Proof here does come with a booklet. And in this booklet, if you read all of the writing that they have in it, you find a paragraph that says, this has been bottled without chill filtration. So if you read the booklet, you can get some vital information about this whiskey. Would love to see them be a little bit more uh, forward with that. Putting it on the label would obviously be the ideal. But it is what it is, 57%. Ben Romick Imperial Proof. Let's get some of this in the glass and give it a taste. So here is the color on the Benromic Imperial Proof. Again, Benromic 10, Benromic Imperial Proof. Looks a little bit redder. Again, we don't know if the color is natural or not. We're assuming that it isn't. However, um, that may indicate more sherry. And right away on this, you notice a difference. The first thing that comes to mind for me is almost like an Irish pot still whiskey. It has kind of a a green graininess to it, like, like unmalted barley, even though there is no unmalted barley in here. Would deep, it's much deeper with its flavor notes here, rich kind of cherry, red fruits. I see. Mm. Maybe a little bit of clove, almost like chili powder. Not at all any of those bourbon notes that we were picking up on the 10. Those seem very much in the background. This is a much spicier, oakier. Oakier is not the right word. It's just, it's a much more wood, wood imparted spice. Maybe hints of tobacco and leather. Let's give it a taste. Slaunchy, y'all. Mm. Very rich, heavy mouthfeel, dark red fruits, chocolate. A lot of that happened here. The milk chocolate. Wow. That difference in ABV is making a huge difference in the delivery of this whiskey. This is a much richer, heavier whiskey. Um, a little bit shorter on the development than compared to the regular 10 year old, but a much longer finish. I'm getting hints of raspberry, a little bit of herbal. Delicious. Uh, again, another, similar to the other 10, it's a very dense concentrated whiskey for, um, which I think is part of their, dis, their kind of distillates character. Okay, we're gonna go side by side here now, a couple drops of water on each, see if anything else changes. Two drops, two drops on both. Keep it fair. All right, back to the regular 10. Again, there's just like a nice fresh, almost like earthiness to this one. Vanilla, sweet caramel, honey, golden apple, pear even. Mm. Okay. So the water on the regular 10-year-old 
is definitely taking a little bit of that, the, the kind of spicier, smoky hit off of it that I mentioned before. It's gotten creamier. Again, a little bit drying on the finish. That dark chocolate is there. The apple, the vanilla. Again, more bourbon forward. There is a little bit, again, that bitterness is still hanging around. I think I preferred the regular 10 without water. And to be clear, I don't think either of these quite need them, even this Imperial Proof, which we're going to try now with water, which is at 57% ABV. Oh, wow. Much more of malt coming through here. Sweet barley. Little hints of citrus, almost like lemon lime. But again, rich, dark notes here. Dark chocolate, plum, raisin. Wood spice. Much smokier this time. Ham, like uh, smoked ham or something like that. You're getting a lot of that in this Imperial Proof. The sherry notes are much bolder now. It's syrupy. It's heavy. The peat is kicking up. This has gotten even a much more active and lively with water. In fact, I think the water is actually a couple drops has done the Imperial Proof well. It's a much more dynamic and all the complexities seem to be shining a bit more here. And it's covering, so you're getting citrus notes, you're getting this dark, again, spice from the barrel influence. There's the hints of oakiness. There's toffee, vanilla, nutmeg, dark sherry notes, plum, raisin, fig even. Milk chocolate, dark chocolate into the finish. Vanilla bean. Longer finish too. Quite good, quite good. Okay. All right. So, uh, Ben Romick, 10 years old. Value wise, you're going to find a bottle of this on, on the shelf at around a $50 US price point here in 2021. Uh, the Imperial Proof, you're looking at closer to $100. So, uh, both 10 years, this is 15% more ABV, a little bit different maturation is from what I can tell based on the tasting. Um, but both really, really strong flavorful whiskeys. Um, I would say uh, good value on the Ben Romick 10 for what you're getting. I think um, moderate value on the Imperial Proof in terms of the amount of money you're, you're spending. So um, I will uh, Im uh, take that into consideration when we do these final scores. So um, I'm a big fan of Ben Romick Distillery. I think that this is one of those distilleries that, that it gets overlooked and shouldn't. Um, I do wish that they were a bit more upfront about chill filtration and coloring in their whiskeys. Um, they, for some, for a distillery that's priding themselves so much on uh, their done at warehouse and kind of doing things this handcrafted way, like it would be really great if they put their money where their mouth is and was a bit more upfront about what their whiskey is aged in uh, and, and whether or not they add color or chill filter. That aside, um, that's really my only major criticism. This is an interesting whiskey for a space cider, considering that they have some peat smoke in it. And I absolutely really, really adore the way that they craft these whiskeys. Um, the Ben Romick 10 years old original is one of the better 10 year old whiskeys, I think, that you can get on the market. It's at a moderate price. It's got a nice heaviness. It's dense. It's got a lot of flavor and complexity. Really, really enjoyable. Uh, the Ben Romick 10 years old. Uh, I'm going to give a 3.5 out of 5, which, mean, uh, which means I definitely recommend you try this or pick up a bottle of good price. The Ben Romick 10 Imperial Proof, uh, for double the price, are you getting double the value? Not quite, uh, but there is a lot to love about this. I love the higher cast, the near cast strength ABV of this. Um, really, really enjoy the intensity and complexity that comes with this bottle. Uh, 10 years old. And for something that's that's approaching nearly about a hundred dollars, um, you know, I think it's my favorite of the two whiskeys, but not by that much considering how much you're paying for it. And I'm going to give this a nice healthy score as well of a three seven five out of five. So three point five out of five for Ben Romick ten years old. Three point seven five out of five for Ben Romick ten years old. Imperial proof. 
All right, folks, uh, thanks so much for hanging out with this review, and I'm going to kick you on over to your malt music. And with that, I'm going to enjoy the rest of these drams. I'll catch you next week on Malt Music or Whiskey Reviews. Thank you all.